And we're back here on the Medicine Ball Caravan. Cecil Doyle here with you with another hour of great music. You know, uh, in this modern age, uh, Louisiana Zydeco has gone through some radical changes. You know, hip-hop and other influences have taken over, as is natural with all musics. But uh, there's still one of the old school, you know, Prairie Zydeco musicians still working. Joe Hall uh, with the Cane Cutters have been at this for many, many years. They produced several albums, the most recent one being Proud to be a Creole. That's been a regular spin here on the Medicine Ball Caravan. Joe Hall will be opening up this season's um, uh, Downtown Alive series that kicks off this Friday at 6 p.m. Uh, we're proud to welcome to the KRVS studios in the Medicine Ball Caravan, Mr. Joe Hall. Will you welcome Joe Hall? Joe can hear me, man. All right, welcome, Joe. Hey, how you doing, Cecil? Glad to, to have you here, man. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about, about uh, where are you from originally, Joe? Originally, uh, Eunice. The Eunice area, as I was saying, you know, the, the whole uh, Eunice, Mamou, Ville Platte, Prairie region of, uh, of Louisiana, right? Exactly. So, uh, so tell, tell us about uh, your introduction to, uh, to Zydeco music. I understand uh, um, uh, you had a relative that uh, had a hand in introducing you and teaching you. <clears throat> My grandfather was a really good house dance accordion player. In those days, it wasn't such thing as, when he played, it wasn't such thing as Zydeco. Uh, uh, it wasn't a name for the music. It was just house dance music. Right. And he played, his name was uh, Clement, Clement, and his nickname, most people know him by, by King, King Ned. Uh-huh. Uh, and, uh, you know, he played with people like, the, you know, the likes of uh, Bebe Carrier. Bebe Carrier played the fiddle with him. Um, but for the most part, for most, most part, he only played, like, house dances. He didn't go into clubs or, 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 or nothing like that. And, and and people actually went to his house to get him to play house dances. Right. And that was the bigger thing back then, right? That was the thing that back then. The only know? thing, right. Yeah, that was the thing, you know. And, and, and uh, so he came from the Mamu area, Mamu Lonsmeg area. Uh-huh. And uh, he... Um, he played with you know people like the, uh Bossek and Cantore and 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 uh Douglas Baylard and 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 and, and, and stuff like that it, and, and and like I say I tell a lot of people that when I do these interviews he didn't leave me, me 
rich in finances, but he left me rich in people. Certainly. Yeah. <laughs> so, therefore, when I started playing, all of these people just came into my life and, oh, oh, I remember your grandfather and I used to play with your grandfather and, and, and stuff like that. So that's, that's where the wealth came from, knowing people. Now, now, I'm curious, you know, you uh, gr growing up at that time, um, the music, the Zodico music that you, that you did hear, was it mostly from records or was it just people playing, you know, at, at, at house dances and such? For the most part, when I first started playing accordion, it wasn't, wasn't record players or, uh, 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 or, or nothing like that, you know. You know, you, you had this club down the street from my grandfather's house. It was the, uh, the old Tip Top. Okay. <laughs> You're laughing. You must have been there. <laughs> well, I'm from Mamu, so I know it's, that area. Yeah. You know? So what, <laughs> what the old-time recording players do, they wouldn't go in the club and play. Oh. They'd sit in uh, on the train track, if, if you can remember, on the train track, and, and they would play right there. Wow. <laughs> they, they'd play, play right there. You know, imagine walking to to buy a cool cup, <laughs> and you, 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 didn't, you wouldn't know that people like Ken Ray Fontenot was famous when you were a small kid. I know. You I know, but he would be out there playing, Borsig. Uh, they had another one, my grandfather, you had another one, uh, Mr. Lulu Caesar. And, uh, uh, and in those days, you know, and I'm, I'm just 51 years old, but uh, in those days you had, a, in units, you had a accordion player in like every other house. True. Yeah. And, and uh, so you would hear it. And it's like, I was doing a, the Wheatland Festival a few years back, and they had this 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 uh, guy that was Spanish descent, and he walked up to me. He said, "Man, uh, I'm glad to meet you, and uh, I've been listening to your music." He said, "Man, it sounds like you got a lot of staccato in your in your music." He mm -hmm. said, "Where did you learn that from?" And I told him, I said, I didn't learn it from nobody. I just listened to it. Yeah, and he probably asked you because it, uh, the staccato sound is sort of, uh, you know, that, that the Tex-Mex sound with the accordion kind That's of. That's right. That. That's right. So he figured, you know, where did you hear that? <laughs> well, it was weird. My music coming from Louisiana being affiliated with like a Tex-Mex style or something like that. But as we all know, the, the Spanish, you know, were here. You right, know? and so it, it, maybe I heard it from a, a older gentleman that that did that, and and I I just kept it kept it in 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 the way I play, and that happens with a lot of musicians in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. You know, you hear something, it sticks in your head, and 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 you keep go going with it. You know what I'm saying? You 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 it, it becomes a part of your style. Right. Now, through all these years, I know you were always picking up, you know, traditional tunes or songs you heard from other people. When did you start kind of putting your own tunes into the into the mix? Did that did that come early on? No, it it it, it didn't. And it, 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 it came from. And I don't. I, and and it, let me say this: I wouldn't say they are my own tunes because most of the tunes that that I I play and people say, "Well, man, that's." That's something that he originated. No, I didn't. Right. Uh, I take pride in doing stuff that other people don't do. <laughs> right. And as we were talking about with Barry Ancelet earlier, you know, uh, with, um, uh, you know, talking about Belton Richard, the way he took uh, the way he took country songs uh, and kind of made a Cajun twist on it. I suppose you could do the same thing with other songs and kind of put put your uh, your region into its uh, its formation. Yeah, because you see. It's like on the let's let's take a song that's that's really getting a lot of uh, playing time on the on the radio, a lot of radio time. Uh, Bully Jack. Uh -huh. Bully Jack is a tune that comes from a a, a very old uh, Creole accordion player, Mister uh, Freeman Fontenot. Mm, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. and Bully Jack. If you listen to the recordings, 
because the recordings are in the archives department right here at UL. Mm -hmm. And um, the way he did it, the, the song, the lyrics to the song, it was going another way. Bolly Jack, he see, Bolly Jack, la ba, Bolly Jack, but please, like Bolly Jack, he go. Now, the recording part was different. It it it, it went another way. Mm -hmm. so I feel I listened to that song for <laughs> about twenty years <laughs> before I recorded it, and uh, I finally recorded it on the last CD. And um, the way we did it, I made the accordion do the exact same thing as the lyrics. Ah, okay. And Bully Jack, you see, Bully Jack, la ba, Bully Jack, mo pri, la Bully Jack, he gone. Put a nice little break into it to make it appealing, appealing, and, and I repeat that, appealing to the younger generation. To make them want to maybe say one day, well, look, man, Joe got this out of the archives department. Let's go, go see what's in there. There you go. We got to keep recycling. Yeah, you got to keep <laughs> recycling and stuff like that. But I want to add that a lot of the uh, 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 accordion players from that generation, including my grandfather, they played songs that the lyrics and the music on the accordion just didn't match. Mm. Now, you listen to it over and over again, you make it match. <laughs> I've did that two or three times. You, you come up with some real nice songs. Well, Joe, you're going to be playing, uh, kicking off this uh, season of Downtown Alive this uh, Friday evening in Downtown Lafayette. Uh, you're going to be bringing the Cane Cutters. Who are you playing with these days? Who's in the Cane Cutters that's going to be with you on Friday night? Okay, well, you see Chuck Bush mm -hmm. is going to be on bass. Uh, Chuck Bush, is, he, he plays with us regular. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul LeVan, he also plays with us regular. Uh on drums, Paul LeVan on drums. I didn't say it, but Chuck Bush, as everybody knows, he's playing bass. And um, Mark Palms is on uh, rhythm gu guitar, along with Cedric Watson. Uh, Cedric Watson, as we all know, has his own band. But uh, when, when Cedric came be there, we got this other uh, fiddle player. It's, it's like two of them. Mm -hmm. Forrest Huval and uh, Marsha Baker, uh, we used them, you know, when Cedric can't, can't be there. But uh, Cedric is like the first option on fiddle. Right, and Cedric's uh, really added a lot to, to the most recent uh, recent album. I mean, it, uh, it, it wouldn't be quite the same without Cedric. Nothing is the same without Cedric. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, yeah, he... Um, he comes to the table with ideas. He's part of what what I mean when I say making things appealing to the younger generation. Uh, he 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 helps with that, you know. In, in the studio, he'll well, man, let's try it this way, let's try it that way, and a lot of times we do it, and it it, it comes out pretty good and pretty appealing to the ear too. Well, all right. Well, Joe, we're looking forward to uh, to your performance this Friday night at Downtown Live. At uh, the, the the festivities kick off at five thirty. Joe goes hits the stage at six o'clock. Uh, can we get you to do one more number on your accordion before we let you go? Exactly. What you got, man? Next song I'm gonna do is "And Joe Dobne to Va Soufer." A, a, a day will come when you will suffer. And I got that from a good friend of mine, uh, Nolton Simeon. Thank you. 
Matafen, have a more marire. And she gone near and Joda Nediva Sufa. Medicine Ball Caravan. Again, Joe Hall and the Cane Cutters will kick off this 2023 spring uh, season of Downtown Live in Park International beginning at 5.30. Joe hits the stage at 6 o'clock. Joe, thanks so much for taking the time to visit with us today. We're going to go out with a track from the Proud to be Creole album, something called Chamignon. Thanks, man. Thank you.